maji mpendwa sabato nyingine nzuri Mungu ametualika tuweze kukaa mbele zake katika ibada ya mchana wa leo nami na kukaribisha katika vipindi vya mchana tuwe pamoja ninataka kukumbusha tu ya kwamba katika kitabu cha Ezekieli 20 Mungu alitoa ahadi nyingi kwa wana wa Israeli na kati ya ahadi hizo ni kwamba tuitunze sabato kwa sababu ni ishara kati yetu na Mungu inayoonyesha ya kwamba Mungu ni bwana wa kututakasa. Kwa hivyo ahadi moja kati ya hizo ni kwamba siku ya leo tutatakaswa tutapokaa miguuni pa Yesu na kwa hivyo na kukaribisha miguuni pa Yesu tuweze kutakaswa na tuweze kubarikiwa pamoja. Tunapoanza vipindi hivi naomba ya kwamba tuweze kuomba na tuombe. Mtakatifu Baba wetu wa mbinguni Tunakushukuru mchana wa leo kwa kutualika tena miguuni pako tuweze kubarikiwa tuweze kutakaswa vipindi vilivyo mbele yetu tunaviweka mkononi mwako utuongoze kwa njia ya roho kwa mtakatifu tuweze kubarikiwa na pia tuweze kutakaswa kwa vipindi hivi kwa ajili ya utukufu wa jina lako kwa jina la Kristo mwokozi wetu amen Mtazamaji mpendwa tunapoanza na kukaribisha katika kipindi cha Bible Treasure Quest ya kwamba kuna kipindi hichi cha watoto ambapo watoto wanajaribu kuchambua Biblia waelewe na kwa hivyo naalika watoto wote waweze kukaribia na pia sisi watu wazima tuweze kukaribia maana kinatuhusisha sisi wote kwa wakati huu tunakaribisha kipindi cha Bible Treasure Quest karibu sana Welcome to our program Bible Treasure Quest. And remember, this is always the place to be. And remember, this is where we are learning every day to grow to love Jesus. And I'm your host, Anne Ombake, and it is always a pleasure to have you listen to this and get some treasures that God has for us. And I hope today you have called your friends and they're joining you so that we work together as we get what God has for us. And here I am together with your friends who are joining us to do something nice as we do the activities in Bible Treasure Quest. And they want to say hello to you. Hi. Hi. And remember, before we do anything, we want to speak to God. Okay? Eliakim, pray for us. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we thank you for this day. Thank you for providing for us as we start our lesson. Be with us for it is a long prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And remember, we want to start our show. And as usual, we have a good surprise. And remember, our surprise comes from God himself because he has given us something special. A Bible that has all the treasures. And those are the treasures that we are getting every day. And now, surprise! We want to open this treasure box. And we want to call Eliakim to open this treasure box for us. And wait. Let's see today what treasure God is having for us. Aha, can we see what treasure God has for us? Are you excited for our next treasure? Yes. And let's see the treasure that God is preparing for us. <laughs> wow. It's a Bible. And you know, we are checking that it is a treasure. Wow. It is about respect. And it is respect to God, God and man. man. Remember, this is the treasure we want to learn today. That is respect, respect. to who? To God, God and man. man. Remember, we have to respect everybody. Starting from man, those people that we live with. And then we extend it to God. And remember, we want to find out what the Bible tells us about that. And I hope you're joining us in this journey. Are you excited as we begin our treasure today? 
Yes. Are you ready for our activity? Yes. Join us in our activity as we open the Bible and then we learn how to respect God and man. And remember, I am ready, set to go. And I hope they're set <laughs> and be ready and set as we do our treasure spelling. Let us check. Let us check. Aha, Bethel, pick the envelope for your group. And Angel, pick the envelope for your group. And remember, be keen as we spell some words about obedience. We are going to do a, an exercise to teach us people who obeyed. And remember, if you don't obey, it means you have disobeyed. It means that you have disobeyed. And they're already. And as usual, I love, I love my Bible because it gives me all these hidden treasures that we learn from people. Join us as we do this, boys and girls. This is a boy, a son of a king. The father was a king. But this boy struggled also fighting the father as he was a king. And even looked for an army to fight against the father. That boy really struggled. Aha! Uh -huh. They are struggling. And you have you got the answer? They are struggling to look for that. And remember, that is your top secret in your group. Remember, that's your top secret in your group. But tell your friend, have you got that? Let's see, everybody's rushing. Wow, this side is done. And who was that boy? Absalom. Absalom. Can we shine for each other? Shy. They are still struggling to get the spelling right. And did you get the spelling? Wow, they are struggling. Let's see. And remember, boys and girls, it's fun always to get something from the Bible. It's not only in school we get fun. Even when we deal with things about God. There is this man of God. There is this man of God. They used to walk two of them. They used to walk to prophets. And one day, one of the prophets was taken. That was Elijah. God took him. And as that man had just said bye, and you can imagine when you're saying goodbye, the way it is so painful. Have you ever felt bad when someone is leaving? Do you enjoy that moment when you're saying bye? No. no. Sometimes you feel like crying. And sometimes I shed tears. Do you cry? Yes. Especially a close friend. Huh? That person just said bye and then started walking back. And then he met a group of boys. And those boys were rowdy. And those boys started to abuse the man of God. They were abusing the man of God, which is very bad. What was the condition that they were using to abuse the man of God? That man had a condition in his body huh? that, was making, that made those boys to abuse him. Huh? What condition is that? Who is, who is that who is trying to? Eh, let me check. Are, are you trying to look at? Remember, what condition is that? Aha, uh -huh, this group is done. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's give chance to these ones as they struggle through. You know, kids, they are struggling to get the answer. And I hope you know the answer already. That's why I like the Bible. Aha. Uh -huh. Which condition is that? This group is done. And they're moving pretty fast. Aha. Uh -huh. These ones are struggling. They're around there. They're around there. Wow, they're all already done. This man was bald-headed. <laughs> and these boys were shouting, you bald-headed man, you bald-headed man. And sometimes, boys and girls, do we abuse some people? Please, remember, we should not abuse people. God does not want. And you know what happened? Some big, big bears came. And they, it killed all those boys. It's so bad. Hey, this Bible is fun. Are you finding some fun there? Yes. Are you finding it challenging? Yes. That is what the Bible should do. Challenge our minds so that we grow. Uh -huh. This is the first man who obeyed in the Bible. The first man who obeyed in the Bible. Who is this man who obeyed in the Bible? Please work with your group. Work with your group. Look at your letters. Look at your letters. This is the Number first man who obeyed. Aha, uh -huh. this side is done. Aha, uh -huh. this side. They're trying. They're thinking of that man. And back at home, give the answer to your friend. Tell them who is that first man who obeyed. And that's the first story we are told of someone who obeyed in the Bible. And that is who? Abel. And do you know how he obeyed? How did Abel obey? How did he obey? They're still thinking. They're still thinking. I will tell you how he obeyed. And I want to tell you of someone who disobeyed. You know, children, always remember that when we give a promise, 
it means you have to keep your promise. And if you don't keep the promise, it means that you have disobeyed. Remember that? Remember that? That is always important. You have to give respect. And respect demands that you have to keep the promise that you gave. And there are people in the Bible who gave a promise. And, that, and those people were a family. That family gave a promise and they never kept the promise. They never kept the promise. And because they never kept the promise, they all died. And that was not respect to God. Because they are told God they were going to give something that is money to God. That family. And then, the man. Who is that man? Who is that man? They are decided to give something. And then they never kept the promise. That was not respect to God. Wow. They are done. What about this side? They are trying. They are trying. You see, they are organizing it well. And they, are, they have to organize. And then it has to come clear. Aha. Uh -huh. I'll just tell you the answer as soon as this other group is done. Aha. And who is that man? That was Ananias. Remember, they never respected God because they had promised that they were going to give some money and then they never gave the money to God. Remember this. This is just the first part. We want to do questions and answer. We want to give to do the questions and answer. And I've moved in your groups. Put your heads together and answer the following questions. And remember, you have to answer these questions too and find whether you know uh, something in the Bible because this is Bible, Bible treasure, treasure quest. quest. We are looking for the treasures that are hidden in the Bible. And group one and group two. Question one for group one. Are you ready? Yes. Are you psyched up? Yes. Aha, and that's why I like my Bible. It has several questions for boys and girls. Aha. And this is the person. David was being pursued by Saul so that Saul can kill him. But in the cave, in the cave where Saul was sleeping, in the cave where Saul was sleeping, it happened that David passed by there. David thought of killing him, but he decided, no, this is a man of God. He respected a man of God. And then he did something. What did David do? Group one. What did David do? Try to see. What did David do in that cave to Saul? He never killed Saul. What did he do? Aha, uh -huh, Patricia. He cut part of King Saul's cloth. He cut part of King Saul's cloth and then in the morning he showed him here is the cloth. Aha, uh -huh, group two. Question one. Question one. This person had daughters-in-law. And when the sons-in-laws died, the daughters-in-laws, one of them decided to follow her, another one went. Okay, so who showed more respect? The one who went or the one who decided to follow? Yes, Eliakim? The one who decided to follow. The one who decided to follow her. Ruth could not imagine leaving the mother-in-law. She just said, yes, I need to go with you and be with you. You still need us around you. That is great respect. That is great respect. Okay. Question two, group one. Question two, group one. Are you getting fun with the Bible? Yes. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying something at home about respect. There is this girl who was taken captive. And she was working in someone's home. And this girl, even if she was just a maid, she never disrespected the boss. And when the boss was sick, some people could just rejoice. Yes, 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 let him be sick. For her, she was hurt and decided to go and tell the wife, I think my, your husband can be healed somewhere. I think your husband can be healed somewhere. This girl was working for who? This girl. Uh -huh. Yes, Marvin? He was working for Naman. He was working for Naman. You know, when you're working for someone, sometimes you may say, like, oh, I don't want to help him. But that girl had respect. He helped Naman. Uh -huh. Group two, question number two. And I hope you have the answers for that. There is this person. There is this, this, this person. 
And this person, the children were ashamed to him. His, his children were ashamed to him because they misbehaved in the temple. And this was a priest. Which priest is this? Uh -huh. Yes, Bethwell? Priest Eli. Priest Eli. <laughs> children, have you enjoyed that? Remember, yeah. respect is important. <laughs> and we are coming back right yeah. after the break so that we learn about respect. And remember, respect is to both God, God and man. man. After the break, please call your friends and let us learn how to respect God and man because it is important and it will help us to grow up to be good boys and girls. And remember, God wants us to love him. And loving God means we have to respect our parents because it is part of the commandments. See you after the break. girls welcome back and remember we have been talking about which treasure respect and remember we said respect is what we we usually have to give respect to who to God and man and remember that is very important and remember that's why we have been saying the Bible is a special treasure because inside we have very many treasures that teach us on how to grow up to be good boys and girls and that's why today we want to look at that and before we open our Bible and learn something from the Bible, we want to give chance to Kayla and Mary to praise God. Please listen to the song. And remember always that at Bible Treasure Quest is the program always to be. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp. Thy word is a light, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp, thy word is a light, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path, thy word is a light, thy word is a lamp, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Psalms 119, Let's shine for them. Shine, shine, shine for Jesus every day. And that was nice. Boys and girls, remember today our treasure is... Respect. respect. And we said we give respect to who? To, to God, God and man. And we want to open our Bible and then we learn about respect. And remember, it is always important to respect people because when we respect them, blessings will always come. And we want to learn about some boys in our family and we want to find out what happened to them. Are you ready for our story? Yes. yes. Everybody sit okay, relax, and then we we'll learn our story today. And today's story is about Priest Eli's two sons. Priest Eli had two sons. And remember, <coughs> Priest Eli was the chief priest in the, in the temple at that time. And Eli used to live with Samuel. But he had big grown boys who were helping him in his work in the temple. And remember, when God called Samuel to speak to Samuel, God gave a special message to Samuel. And the message was about the boys of priest Eli. Because these boys did not have respect. And it was not just respect to the father who was priest Eli but it was even respect to God, how they were behaving in God's temple. And remember, we have rules in church. Did we talk about that? Yes. yes. And remember these rules, we say they are there for our good. And even how you are to handle things in the church, we have rules. And that is what used to happen at that time. There were rules on how these boys were to behave in the temple as they were giving sacrifices because they were helping the dad to do sacrifices. 
but these boys messed as they were giving the sacrifices and they never handled the sacrifice as well. And that made God to be very, very sad. And remember, boys and girls, even the small things that we do in church, the bad things that we do in church, when we don't keep the rules in church, it does not make God happy. It makes God sad, and God does not feel happy. And that was not the only thing. And God even reminded Priest Eli that your boys are not doing it fine. And and we, we are always loved by our parents. Okay? And Priest Eli loved his boys very much. But there was a problem. He could not tell them that you have gone wrong. The boys sometimes could mess. But Priest Eli, because he loved them, sometimes could not even correct them. And sometimes our parents always correct us. Are we happy about it? Yes. When our parents correct us, it is always good. And remember, if your parent does not correct you, then sometimes you may mess like the kids of priest Eli because the dad loved them so much that he never even rebuked them. He never corrected them. So sometimes they could just do anything and that made God very, very sad. And then there were enemies who <coughs> attacked the Israelites and the Israelites had to go out and fight the Philistines. And because God was not very happy, they went and fought. And then the Philistines came and then they picked the Ark of the Covenant and went with it. And then during that fight, because these boys had misbehaved, these boys died out there when they were fighting. And remember, Priest Eli was seated in his house and very anxious because he had heard that the Philistines had defeated the Israelites because God never went with them, because God was mad. As he was seated on the seat waiting for the news, someone just came in into the house and then told him, the Philistines have defeated us. And not just only defeating us, they have just picked the ark of the covenant and they have gone with it. And remember, the ark was very special and it had to stay in the temple. And that shocked priest Eli and then there was the worst message that followed can you guess the message what was the message yes Bethwell the message was that his two sons died aha and then the person said and that is not the only thing that has happened your sons are also dead because the Philistines came into the camp and then they defeated us and then they killed people and that fight most Israelites died. And do you know what happened to Eli? Eli got shocked. The Ark of the Covenant has been taken by the Philistines. And not only that, his two sons have died. He just collapsed on the seat and he died. You know, children, respect is always important. And sometimes when we don't respect God and Man, those people whom we live with, it will cost us. The way it costed the life of the children of Eli. That is why when your parents, when your teachers, and when the adults that are around us correct us, don't take it badly. Even when your teacher in school, your teacher in church tells you that is not right. Remember, when he's correcting you, you need to respect because that is helping you. And if you're not corrected, then you can do a mess the way Eli's boys did. And because of that, God left them. And if you are, you are not respectful, God can just leave you. And when God leaves you, you are on your own. You will not be safe. And that is why the children, of, the children of Eli died during the fight. Do you want to die early? No. no. Remember the Ten Commandments tells us, children obey your parents. Yes. And remember there is always a promise given so that your days are longer yeah. on earth and remember if you want to live longer to see your parents at old age and not to kill your parents you have to give respect to who and who to, to god, god and man. man remember when you learn to respect someone that you see around your parents your teachers you can always find it easy to respect god above and that is why our memory verse for today is taken from first peter 2 verse 17 let us say 1 Peter 2, verse 17. Let's say again, 
1 Peter 2 verse 17. And repeat after me as I tell you, show proper respect to everyone. Show proper respect to everyone. Fear God. Fear God. Honor the king. Honor the king. Again, show proper respect to everyone. Fear God. Honor the king. Remember, when you show proper respect to everybody and you honor God, you can always find it easy even to honor everybody around you. And remember, your days will be longer and God will protect you. And remember, boys and girls, sometimes we are so disrespectful until people look at us and they say, hey, are these children of God? Have you ever heard someone say, hey, does this child go to church? Have you ever? But I think you're good boys and I hope you're good boys. And that is why Bible Treasure Quest is here to give you information from the Bible that God wants us to show respect to everybody. And when we show respect to everybody, God will always bless us the way God blessed, the way God blessed other people who showed respect. But remember, for the example of Eli's sons, did they live longer to live a long life and see even their grandchildren? No. no. And even at the end of the day, they destroyed the life of the father because the father was shocked and he died. Boys and girls, remember this. Respect is very important. And God commands that we respect everybody around us. Our elder sister, our aunties in the house, our relatives, teachers, and church. And when we respect these people, God will bless us and we will always live longer and prosper. And it is, I want us to pray that God may help us to have respect so that this, when we have respect, God will give us long life to live and we'll not die early like the boys of Eli. And we want to ask, we want to ask Kayla to pray that God may help us to, be, to have respect as small children. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh God, thanks for this day that you have given unto us. Thanks for our parents, teachers, and everybody around us. Please make, uh, make us to respect each other, even God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Remember, boys and girls, respect is important. And we have said we respect who and who? God, God and man. man. And remember, when we respect God and man, God will always bless us. And always remember, from here at... Bible Treasure Quest. It is always our pleasure to, to be with you and to share something special from the Bible because the Bible is the only treasure that has several things that we can learn. And when we learn from it, we can always love Jesus. Do you have a longing to respect everybody? Yes. What have you learned today? Huh? Mary? We have learned that you should honor your parents. We should always honor our Parents, angel? We should respect people who are elder than us. We respect people who are elderly, yeah. Eliakim? We should respect both God and man. We should respect both God and man. man. And I hope you have learned something at home. And I want us to go through our memory verse once more. It was from the book of First Peter 2.17. What does it say? You say after me. Show respect to everyone. Show respect to everyone. Fear God. Fear God. Honor the king. Honor the king. Remember, it's always important for us to learn to respect everyone. And when we respect people down here, we will always respect God in heaven. And we are happy to have you and we want to say thank you so much. And we want to say bye. bye. And we are going to get more from the treasures in the Bible. Tazamaji mpendo anatumai umebarikiwa na umefraia kipindi kilindicho pita. Na kwa wakati huu tena na kukaribisha katika kipindi kingine cha Bible Game. Na hichi kipindi kinausisha watu wote. Si watoto peke yao, bali hata vijana na watu wazima. 
ya kwamba tuweze kuchambua Biblia, tuweze ku, kuangalia ni nini kilicho katika Biblia zetu na tuweze kujifahamisha, tuweze kubarikiwa na kukaribisha katika kipindi hicho cha Bible game. Karibu sana. Hi, it's me again, Belora Ayayo, and I am back with games. But today it's a it's kind of it's a new it's not new but it's not old. Uh, there's there's a theme we are working on today. Uh, the verses we are going to discuss today are reminders. So the guys who are going to remind us these verses in the Bible today are from the farthest end with uh, Titus Munjalo. Hi viewer, welcome. He is a radio presenter and he has his colleagues here with him. So we want to see how radio presenters are. Next is Tabby. Hello, welcome to Bible Challenge. And then we have Evans Okwakao. Hi. You know in my mother tongue Okwakao means we don't take, we don't take, we can't <laughs> take. <laughs> then it's Lorraine over there. Hi, welcome to Bible Game. That's Mama Lexin for you. And Filgona Rachilo. Hi, welcome. A presenter, see that beautiful smile, eh? You will see it often. And then, <laughs> Lagat, it's Lagat. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, this is Vincent Lagat. Wish to welcome you. Welcome to Bible Game. Yeah, so this is our team for today. Go pick your Bible your notebook and your pen and then write these things down and let us get into the game so for today we have three sections the first one will be opening the bible the second round will be um, finding verses here and there and then the final round we will be asking random questions from the bible so before i begin are you ready oh yes yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah. Are you ready? Oh, yes. yes. Yes, that is the spirit. So, close your Bibles. We want to begin opening these Bibles seriously. Oh, let me give you a clue. Today, the first round and the second round, don't bother with the Old Testament. We are in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So, that's a good clue. Okay, the first book. Open the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 22. Matthew, chapter 21, verse 22. It says, And whatever things you ask in prayer, Believing you will receive. Mm, amen. I said there are reminders that we are being given today. So you listen to the words of the scriptures. The second book, you close your Bibles after you're done? Yes. Why hold you? <laughs> close your Bibles. I do not like people who are cheating me. Close your Bible. The book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24. Mark, chapter 11, verse 24. Mark, chapter, yes. And Mm, verse 24. 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, and the disciples were what is amazed. What's popping? <laughs> and the no, disciples excuse me, were excuse me, excuse me. If you find the book, chapter, and verse, start reading. Don't go, it say, go, don't go around saying it says, because <laughs> another person will come and overtake you. So she got it first, but she was delaying. Read it. For this reason, she. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Mm. Amen. 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 Close the Bibles. Yeah. Please follow instructions. Mm. The book of Luke chapter 2 verse 45. Luke chapter 2 verse 45. 45 says, they did and not when find him, failed. so find him. they went back to Jerusalem looking for him. Follow instructions. Is mm -hmm. that Luke mm -hmm. chapter 2 verse 45? And it when, they, when they, they found him not, not they him, went back they to Jerusalem to looking Jerusalem. for him up and down and uh, all the way. That's what I read. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> okay. I am sorry. Okay. Look. Um, <laughs> close your Bible. I'm very sorry. Close your Bible. <laughs> close your Bible. Mm. Close your Bible. You're holding your Bible. Close your Bible. Luke chapter 6 verse 31. Luke chapter 6, verse 31. And just, and just as you, as went, you men went men to, to do you, you also do them like, likewise. Yeah, and the one who began. <laughs> but you began <laughs> almost at the same time, so. So we both won. You are a gentleman. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> close your Bibles. Close your Bibles. Tabby, 
<laughs> we are closing up. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. John chapter 9 verse 25. John chapter 9 verse 25. John chapter 9 verse 25. He, he answered and, he answered and, answered and said, said no, whether he, he is a sinner I'm always against you. But one thing I know that wherever I was blind before and I see. Mm. Mm. Lagat, I will say this again. Do not start with it says. Read the verse, okay. please. Okay, close your Bibles. Hmm. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. I have, I have shown, shown you, you in every way by laboring by like this hard. that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. <laughs> Amen. I want you guys to be honest. I don't want to be looking at you so that you close your Bibles yes. all the time. Yes. If you finish reading the book, close your Bible. Yes. Okay. I don't have to remind you. Close the Bible. The final book, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. We are done. We are done with that section. And now section two. These are the instructions. Mm -hmm. At one question, in one question, I mean, I'll read the verse. You complete it. I'll read like if I say, for God so loved the world. Yes, good people. And then another one, I'll read the verse. You find it. Or I will sing a song, you find where the song was written from. <coughs> okay? Okay, so the first one, um, I will read it and then you complete. Close your Bibles, I don't want you to open. I will tell you the book, but you have to complete it before you open the book. <laughs> okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For no matter how many times... How many promises God has made? <laughs> Stop stealing. <laughs> I ask you to come. <laughs> I'm seeing you. I am seeing you. For no matter how many promises God has made, complete that verse. It's a song, even. When I banga, oh, they always sing. No matter how many promises? All his promises are true. My ear. Yes and amen. Yes. yes. That is the completion of the verse. Yes. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. Oh. First Corinthians chapter 1 <laughs> verse 20. They are yes in Christ. Okay. Close your, uh, don't close. You don't even bother. Okay. This is the verse. Being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you oh. shall carry it on to completion. Mm. Where did I get it from? I said it, uh, all, all the first round and the second round comes from the New Testament. Mm -hmm. I hope you're not long-sighted. I can see your eyes. Being confident in this, that he Being who began a good in work in you. Yes. Philippians 1 verse 6. Yes. Yes. Philippians 1 verse 6. Okay, the next one. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Philippians 4 verse 4. Verse four. Mm. And uh, the one that says rejoice always, pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. <laughs> Book of James. Eh? They look alike, but they are not oh. alike. Yes? Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Not far from the one that we've just shared. <laughs> Someone in some books it says, pray without ceasing. Really? Mm -hmm. The clue book. Mm -hmm. I give you a clue. <laughs> I already told you they all come from the New Testament. It's an epistle. Most of the books in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, are epistles. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is. Someone is whispering it, but you guys can't even hear. Pray without ceasing, yeah. It has a first and a second. Yeah. No. 
First Peter. No. That's one. Primo. No. Starts with a T, yes. It's in okay. Thessalonians. Yes. Thessalonians. Chapter. Chapter chapter verse. Chapter mm -hmm. five verse sixteen. Five verse sixteen. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. I continue. In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in mm. Christ Jesus concerning you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm. Uh, the next book, it's someone's name. I've just given you a clue. Okay. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities to be obedient and ready to do whatever is good. That is the book of Titus. Mm -hmm. Chapter. Uh, where we are calling them to be reminded. <laughs> Chapter 3, verse 1. Yes. Okay, that is true. Remind, Remind people to be submissive to their magistrates and authorities to be obedient, to be pre prepared and willing to do any upright and honorable work. Mm, yeah. Nice. Uh, this, one. Hmm? This, one is, this one is powerful. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. <laughs> That cannot be in the New Testament. It is in the New Testament, my mm -hmm. brother. I told you all of them come from the New Testament. <laughs> Read it again. So you can't go away. No, not Romans. Starts with a P. A P. <laughs> Seriously? Read it again. Mm -hmm. um, your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Philippians. Peter. Are you sure? Peter? No. It's in Philippians. Find it if it is in Philippians. <laughs> yeah. Let me help you open. Open it. Peter? No. It's in Philippians, my friend. PH, but not Philippians. <laughs> PHI, but not Philippians. Oh, I know. It's I. Hey, we? Philemon? Yes, chapter. <laughs> mm, don't copy that. There are only two books in the, in the New Testament that has PHI. So you guys, you guys are really, are really looking for it. Just know where mm. Philemon is, and then after you find it, it's almost at the beginning. The words. Ah, uh, your love. It starts with your love. Mm. Your Hearing love has given thy me love and faith. Yes. Hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast. That's taught. the book of Philemon, mm. chapter. One verse five. One verse five. No, go down. Verse 7. Yes. For we have great joy and consolation in your love because mm. the hearts of the That's saints the one. have been refreshed by you, brother. Amen. That is the one. Mm. Okay. Uh, now this is the book you've been singing about all the time. Yes. Humble yourselves before the Lord. And he will lift you up. Humble yourselves before the Lord. He will lift you up. Oh. He mm -hmm. will lift you up. Mm? He will lift you up. You've been singing this book since we began. Now you don't want to say it. Humble <sighs> <Among> yourselves <laughs> before James. the Lord. Yes, chapter. James, James 4.10. Correct. Humble <laughs> wow. yourself before the Lord. It's highlighted. It's highlighted. And he lift you up. <laughs> <laughs> It is his luck, his Bible. So he, is he, he, read that, he read that verse like almost all the time. So, mm. ah, this is also another book you've been singing about. Okay. But you were a chosen race. Hebrews. <laughs> a royal priesthood, a holy First nation, Peter. God's First own Peter. people. Correct. He yeah, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, yes. a chapter holy four. nation, God's own people. Chapter 4. No. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his light. We are a chosen generation. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. it's not in chapter 4. Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. It's in the book of... Uh... It's First Peter, yes. Verse 9. Yes. Not chapter 1. <laughs> but mm -hmm. here a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Yeah. Chapter, chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, verse mm. 9. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can now close your Bibles because you don't need them. I have mm. seen it. Random questions. Mm. <laughs> this is going to be tricky, but it's going to be. 
interesting. These are random questions, yes. as they are called random questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Who is the author of the book of Lamentations? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Ah, so that was simple. Nice. Jeremiah. It is good, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you know. The next question, this one is now very tricky. Mm. Make it a little bit tough. <laughs> How many chapters do we have in the Bible? Chapters? Mm -hmm. In the oh. whole Bible? In the whole Bible. What do you mean? Three. <laughs> no, that's too much. How many chapters do we have one in the Bible? 1,300. One it's 1,000 and something. So and my knowledge fifth. is 1,200 plus. No. <laughs> it's less than 100. No, it is more than 1,100. Yeah. 1,000. That's what I told you, it is 1,000. You can open your Bible and start counting. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you can open your Bible and start counting. <laughs> uh, Let me give you a trial. Yes. 1,260. No, yes, I said it is 1,100 and something. 1,180? No, and 80? 1180. 80? 86. <laughs> no. 85. No. <laughs> no, are we no. guessing what it is that we know? If you know, you, you know. Guys, it's around you there, know, right? You, yeah, it's around 180. You almost got it. The so, Bible has 1,189 chapters. I was about you. So almost I got it. Yes, you almost got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it, 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 it shows that you, you kind of know your Bible. Mm? Okay. Here is a fun fact. Mm -hmm. The Bible in the Old Testament, mm. it has 39 books. Mm -hmm. And these 39 books consist of 929 chapters. So, question is, which is the middle chapter of the Old Testament? Middle chapter. Middle, or middle, middle book or middle chapter? The central chapter of the Old Testament, not mm -hmm. middle book. Not that it's mathematics. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> I failed in maths. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, we dropped mathematics. Wow. The central book, we would have begun central book so that it comes central chapter. It is? Guess what? I help you. Yes. Mm -hmm. help the name of the book had a person who was suffering. Job. Uh -huh. Job. So which chapter in the book of Job? So 37? Too far? No. It is Job. Job. Okay, the chapter that is, is 23. What? The, the central, central chapter, chapter of the Old Testament. You are almost there. The central chapter in the Old oh Testament is Job, Job chapter oh. 20. You can just open I your Bible and start counting. Hmm? Start ca you almost said it. Yeah. You could have said it. 34. 20. Oh. If you count those Tell chapters me. in the Old Testament, you find that Job, out of 929 chapters if mm. you divide by, by, <laughs> by, <two>. <laughs> <laughs> by 39 <laughs> books and stuff and stuff if you look at you will find that job 20 yeah, is there the mm. okay <laughs> ah this one is now tricky you have to open your bibles wow. mm. which people in the bible had faces like lions and were swift as gazelles in the mountains Gadites. Ah, nice. Mm -hmm. Correct. Wow. <laughs> hey. Correct. Uh, uh, what no, what did she say? <laughs> the Gadites. The Gadites. Well, if you, you, if you look at the book. I'm telling you. No, I'm telling you. If you look at the book of First Chronicles, chapter mm. 12, verse 8, these guys were with King David when he was battling many uh, one of his many battles first as a king first chronicles. first chronicles chapter 12 verse 8 you can just read it to confirm mm, us. Uh -uh. Eight. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> these are the names of the famous experienced soldiers from the type of guard who Good joined days. david's yeah. troops when he was mm -hmm. first at the de uh, desert fort they were experts with shields and spears as far as looking as lions as quickly as mountain deer uh, you almost said moving. Feel gone. How do you know that? <laughs> God, I, I went to a Christian school. Alichukwa <laughs> CRE. <laughs> she studied CRE. Okay, the next question. Who had a son called Daniel? Daniel. Not Belteshazzar. Who had a son called Daniel? David. Correct. Ah. <laughs> Where? It is correct. How did it? How? David, how? Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. Yes, it's it's David. It's David. First Chronicles chapter three verse one. 
David, Mona is in a camp. Daniel the prophet or Daniel? <laughs> Daniel the prophet. Um. I already told you it's not Daniel, but uh, but Shaza. Daniel. It's just Daniel. Oh, David yeah. So now these were the sons of David, which were born unto him in Hebron. The first born Ammon of Ahinoam the Jezreelites. The second Daniel of Abigail the Carmelites. Mm. Mm. Uh huh. Mm. Daniel the son of da uh, of Abigail. Okay. The next mm. question. Who was Goliath's brother? Please don't tell me you know that. Who? Uh, I know. <laughs> okay, let's have an answer. Who was Goliath's <laughs> brother? He had four brothers. Had the one who was killed by someone in the book of uh, First Chronicles chapter. No! Okay, oh chapter. <laughs> no, I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. The spirit is revealing. Who was Goliath's <laughs> brother? Uh -huh. uh, start with A. Goliath's brother. I've forgotten the name. So you open the book of First Chronicles. I'm going to read it from the Chapter. book of First Chronicles. Even if I open, I can only preach it. <laughs> the first. The name starts with Goliath. A. Somebody called Goliath. This is Goliath. Or Goliath. Yeah. Or should I say Goliath? Yeah. Mm. So yes, that makes sense. First Chronicles. <laughs> give us a chapter, please. Chapter I'll give you the chapter. verse. Verse <laughs> 3. <laughs> yeah. It's in verse 3. I don't know which chapter. You tell me. Goliath. What is the name of this guy? It starts with L. Lan la. You're almost there, but it's not. Mm, there's no. Mm. <laughs> lai, lai, no. Lan. <laughs> you almost. You almost. Just pronounce it properly. Lan. No. Pronounce <laughs> <laughs> it. It's even in. It, it's it's like a Lua word. Lan. <laughs> No. <laughs> a little word for praying, is it? Lam. 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 You are in Lam. Oh, Lam. the brother of Goliath. Was killed by who? By Gath. Mm, correct. Yeah. That is the brother I was looking for. The last question. I hope she'll not steal it from you guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who was the king who became a king for only seven days and killed himself? Mm. Don't tell me you know that also. Please let, the answer, let, let these other people answer. There was a king after Jeroboam. Is it? Yeah. Mm. Rehoboam. Rehoboam. Is it Rehoboam? Jeroboam. It's confusing. <laughs> there was a king who was there. Mm. And he became a king for seven days. He ruled over Triza. Or is it Tirza? Triza. For seven days and killed himself. Because he was surrounded. Guy, I'm giving you the clues. Like yeah. yeah. He, was, he surrounded. was surrounded. And then he decided to kill himself. He burnt himself alive. Was he Solomon's son? I, I don't know. I can't say, yeah, you know. Almost. Mm. Ah, you raised your hand and you don't know the answer. I'm almost there. <laughs> the answer is coming very soon. I'm almost there. First Kings. Yeah. First Kings, yeah. First Kings. Right after the reign of Jeroboam, I'm sure mm. it's Jeroboam, mm. not Jeroboam. This guy followed in the footsteps of this king. He was sinful. Jeroboam or Rehoboam? And God punished him. You know after now you're confusing you're me. The king after Jeroboam. You're confusing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll confuse Jeroboam, you until Rehoboam. Get over. <laughs> Rehoboam. Yeah, that one. Apijam. He killed himself after seven days of being a king. He reigned over Triza. Tirza. Triza. Tirza. Yeah, almost to the point. First kings. Mm. Mm -hmm. Verse 15 to 18. I'm not telling you the chapter. Verse 15. Verse 15 to 18. The Israelites were surrounded, many people were killed, and then after he saw that they, they were on the losing end, he went to the king's harem and lit the place and burnt himself alive. Abijam reigned after Rehoboam. Um. Anyway. Mm. So you just, I just say and then you tell us. Is it, tell us. Is it in chapter 12? Mm -hmm. Zim. Yeah, mm. it's King Zimri. Cha Zim. First Kings chapter 16 verse 
15 to 18. Mm. You'll find him there. So, we have come to the end of our session. Okay. If you did not happen to answer any <laughs> question, I am sorrowful. In fact, I am apologetic. I can, no, I can't <laughs> empathize with your predicament, but you know, sin in life. You see, um, in this life, we have to, you have to understand the Bible and know the Bible because we have come to a time where the world is ending mm? and we need to put on the whole armor of God so that when the devil comes, we will shout hallelujah. The book of Jude chapter 1 verse 2 is what I leave you with. Mercy, peace and love be yours in abundance. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Kazamaji mpendwa, natumai umebarikiwa na kipindi cha Bible game. Kwa wakati huu tena, na kukaribisha weze kubarikiwa na kipindi cha uimbaji. Na na kukaribisha weze kuimba pamoja nasi wa imbishaji wetu wanapoimba. Na wa imbishaji watajaribu kutuelezea e, madhumuni ya watunza nyimbo hizi tunapoimba ili tuelewe walinuia nini walipotunga na walipoimba hizo nyimbo ili nasi tunapoimba pia tuweze kubarikiwa na tuweze kuimba kwa kuelewa na kufahamu kwa wakati huu na wakaribisha waimbishaji waweze kuja watuelekeze katika kipindi hichi nawe mtazamaji karibu sana Sabato njema na mambo, mambo mema. mema na mambo mema sabato njema unajua tunapenda kurudia uh, salamu hiyo mara kwa mara ndio tusikie vizuri sasa sabato njema na mambo, mambo mema mchana huu tumekuja hapa kuimba nyimbo takatifu za Yesu kwa hivyo tunafungua ibada hii ya leo na wimbo nambari tatu. Mungu atukuzwe kila mtu kujeni na nyimbo zenu za Kristo tutukuze Mungu tuimbe pamoja Je kwa 
papa pa yesu wana uka mtu kuze kwa mambo yote pamoja na washiriki wengine tunatukuza Mungu mimi Belora Ayayo Brian Mego hapa engineer Aha, na pia ni wetu Brian mwenzangu. Sasa tuungane pamoja katika nyimbo zetu za Kristo, wimbo nambari moja na thelathini Yesu kwetu ni rafiki. Tuimbe pamoja. Yesu kwetu ni rafiki. tunaongelea kushikilia imani una imani kiasi gani ni kubwa ama ni ndogo mimi sijui ni wewe na Mungu wako unajua wimbo huo wa sahi bwana uniongoze juu Brian no. sahi sahi venye tunaongea sahi tuko mm-hmm. tuko na katika wakati ambapo watu wanasumbuka eh tuko na changamoto e, nyingi sana ya corona mm-hmm. watu wana kazi mtu anashangaa anaenda je shule eh mtoto hata hawaendi shule ndio hiyo sasa wimbo huu aliyeandika alikuwa anasema yeye licha ya hayo yote ambayo anapitia na sisi pia tunapitia matatizo yetu ta anatuhimiza tuendelee kukaza mwendo wetu tukienda mbinguni kwa sababu hilo ndilo final goal ndio mwisho wa safari yetu <laughs> karibuni tuimbe wimbo nambari 73 na tatu. na bwana uniongoze juu <laughs> Ni 
imani hata mbingu jukuli ko dunia bwana uni Shindwe na adui kwa imani na sikia sauti ya washindaji bwana uni inue kwa imani hata mbingu Mwisho nitaomba Bwana uniongoze tu Bwana uni inue tu kwa imani hata mbingu imani tutaongozwa juu tunaomba tukiongozwa juu tupe moto wa uhai ndio tuwe na uwezo wa kuomba tukipanda juu nambari 80 Mtazamaji wangu natumai umeendelea kubarikiwa jinsi ambavyo nami nimeendelea kubarikiwa na kwa wakati huu tena na kukaribisha kwa kipindi kingine cha matumaini 
ujumbe wa matumaini. Kwa wakati huu tutapata ujumbe kutoka sehemu tofauti tofauti za nchi yetu ya Kenya ambao unatupatia matumaini. Na pia nataka kukufahamisha ya kwamba hata wewe ukiwa na ujumbe ambao utaleta matumaini kwa wenzetu ujumbe wa wote utakao leta matumaini unakaribishwa ya kwamba uweze kutumba ujumbe huo kwa anwani ambayo umepewa pale katika runinga ili uweze kufikia Hope Channel Kenya na ujumbe wako utawasilishwa vilivyo kwa wakati huu na kukaribisha uweze kusikiliza ujumbe huu kutoka sehemu mbalimbali za Kenya karibu sana mtazamaji Hi everyone I want to take you to the book of Psalms 33 verse 18 And the Bible says, Behold the hope of the Lord is on those who hope and those who fear him. At this time, when all the churches are open, I want to give you some hope that mm -hmm. all our pain stops in the church. When you feel you have some stress, when you feel there's a problem, when you feel there's something you really need to talk to God about, I want to tell you today that all our pain stops in the church. Just go there to the church, kneel down, Talk to God. Tell him all that worries you. Tell him all that you need from him. And indeed, it shall be well. It is well with our soul because we have God. Just go there and talk to him. How faithful are you to God? Are you faithful to God or just uh, you are living because you had something, some means to or something to eat. But when the hard times come, And that is when it became to know that how, how is our faith? Is it strong or weak? We don't have to look at the world. The world has so many things. And we know that the devil is not asleep. He has to bring many pandemics, many diseases. But we still lift our heads, look at God. And we are so thankful. So we pray for them, those who have lost their income, that the Lord touched them in a special way, that they may remember and know that this, that is not the end of it. The only person to call is God and he will provide. Hakuna kitu, ugumu kwake. So everything is possible. God loves them, God cares for them. It is our hearts only to surrender. The Lord blesses, the Lord gives, and his time is the best opportunity for each and everyone. God bless the work of your hands. Umewahi kuwa katika safari. Na safari hii imekuwa na changamoto kadha wa kadha. Na katika safari hii unashangaa utawahi fika. Tufungue vitabu vyetu vya nyimbo. Wimbo nambari 158. Sisi kama wakristo tunao safari na safari letu ni kwenda mbinguni na maombi yetu kila siku ni kwamba Mungu atupe uwezo tupitie hizi changamoto zote ambazo tunapitia katika dunia hii na mwishowe tutafika nyumbani Tufungue vitabu vyetu vya nyimbo ni nyimbo nambari 158 umwendo gani huu nyumbani Oh, 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 oh,
furaha kamili tutakutana nyumbani mwa baba wimbo mwingine tutakao wimba wimbo nambari 65 twendeni askari watu wa Mungu Tazamaji mpendwa natumai bado uko kando ya runinga yako na kwa wakati huu nataka tuweze kujumuika katika kubarikiwa na ujumbe kutoka kwa mtumishi wa Mungu kwa jamii zetu. Huu ni ujumbe maalum kwa jamii. Natumai tuko pale na wazazi wetu, tuko pale na watoto wetu na jamii kwa ujumla. Na kukaribisha katika kipindi hiki cha mafunzo ya jamii na namkaribisha mtumishi wa Mungu mchungaji John Tuway aweze kutuelekeza katika sehemu hiyo. Karibu sana na ubarikiwe pamoja nami. Mpenzi mtazamaji, ni wakati mzuri ambapo ninakukaribisha katika program hii ya maisha ya nyumbani. Nilie nawe ni mimi mchungaji John Tuway ambaye nimekuwa pamoja nanyi wakati mwingi na ninakuwa nawe siku ya leo tena. Kwa hivyo karibu sana katika masungumzo ya siku ya leo ya maisha ya nyumbani. Na kabla hatujaendelea ebu na tuombe. Baba mtakatifu Mungu wetu wa mbinguni, rehema zako na huruma zako siwe pamoja nasi tunapoanza kipindi hiki na tunapoongea juu ya maisha ya nyumbani hapa. Bwana uwe kati yetu na utuongoze. Mtazamaji naweka mkononi mwako mbarikie. 
aelewe na kile ambacho tunaenda kuongea juu yake na iweze kumjenga na kuleta karibu nawe asa sana juu ya ulezi wa watoto nyumbani na mwongozo katika maisha yetu ya kila mara nyumbani wakati yetu katika jina la Yesu mkombozi wetu amen Mbensi mtazamaji leo ninakukaribisha tena katika mafundisho ya siku ya leo. Sana sana leo tunaangalia juu ya ile ambayo tunaita single parenting. Unajua katika maisha ya siku hizi watu mabadiliko imekuja. Single parenting ni kwamba ni, ni ulezi wa watoto na mzazi mmoja. Na hilo ni jambo ambalo si kitu ambayo ningeni sana katika vijiji vyetu na katika jamii katika kanisa imekuwa sasa kila wakati utakuta ya kwamba nyumba nyingi imekuwa ya mzazi mmoja naweza kuwa mzazi mwanaume naweza kuwa mzazi mama sana sana katika eneo zetu utakuta ya kwamba nyumba nyingi zinaongozwa na kina mama na wako na watoto kiasi ambacho inaonyesha kwamba sasa imekuwa kawaida ya kila siku. Na hivyo tunasema ya kwamba katika dunia ya sasa utakuta ya kwamba nyumba nyingi mamilioni ya nyumba zinaongozwa na mama eh, na mzazi mmoja. Na hilo ndio utakuta ya kwamba kila mara huwa labda tunasahau kufikiria je wanaishi kwa namna gani hawa wazazi? Na je mwongozo wao kwa watoto wataishije? Na hii ndio nimeona ya kwamba ni heri niongee juu ya wao. Na ni wengi, ni mtazamaji wewe ambao unaketi hapo na mwingine na wengine sasa wanaasa kusema mimi sasa mimi niko na yangu hapa sisi tuko wawili. Inanihusu nini? Waje ni kueleze. Kuele, hapo kwenye huko mama moja ama mwingine ni kwamba imetokea wengine wanaenda huko. Ujue ya kwamba iko namna ambavyo kuna wengine ambao ni single parenting ama ni mzazi ya mlezi mmoja sio kwa sababu ya kupenda kwake wengine wameingia hapo kwa sababu ya kifo wengine wamekuwa hapo kwa sababu ya talaka wengine wameingia hapo tu kwa sababu pate mbaya hakupata mtu aliyemuoa ama shida ikampata hivyo kwa hivyo we, wengi wanaingia hapo kwa njia ya, ya kuishi kivyake kwa sababu hawakuolewa na wengi pia wanaingia hapo kwa sababu ya kifo wanakuwa sasa wajane katika hiyo njia. Na wala ambao mungaliko muko wawili unaweza kuwa hapo anytime. Maana hiyo inaonyesha kwamba maisha inaweza kukuelekeza katika mwelekeo huo. Kwa hivyo ndiye ninakuomba kwamba ukete pale usikize. Hata kama mungaliko wawili elewa na vile ambavyo wale wengine wana feel wakiwa katika njia hiyo maana kukitokea talaka utakuwa mmoja kukitokea kifo utakuwa mmoja kwa hivyo ni heri ujue maana wewe unaweza kuwa candidate ya kule kwa hivyo ni nini ambapo unajua kuna story moja tuliambia kwamba tulikuwa tunasoma kwa literature na vitabu inasema kwamba kulikuwa na old mother alikuwa anaitwa kus na yeye mwandishi mmoja aliandika shairi akisema ya kwamba there was an old woman who lived in a in a in a, in a shoe. she had so many children she didn't know what to do and she gave them some both uh, broth without any bread wiped them all soundly and put them to bed kwamba huyo mama alikuwa anaishi kwa viatu na yeye alikuwa ni, ni, ana maana ya kwamba hakujua kitu ya kufanyia watoto na kwa hivyo kila mara alishindwa. Aliwapatia uji bila mukate. Aliwashika wote na kuwaweka walale bila kujua ni nini. Ukiangalia katika hizo laini ine, unaangalia kwamba hizo ni shida ambapo wengi wanapitia katika maisha yao wakiwa wasasi single. Na kwa hivyo ukiangalia je wanahitaji pesa? Wanahitaji mahali pa kuishi wanahitaji chakula wanahitaji discipline ni thamu katika watoto wao hizo zote ni maisha lakini ukiangalia sana kwa kindani na kwa ukaribu sana 
utaangalia kwamba maisha ya watu wanaishi pa eh, moja akiwa mzazi wanapitia mambo mengi na kwa hivyo mahitaji ya hawa ni nini ni kwamba wanahitaji mwelekeo kuelewa nitafanya nini katika njia hii. Nitafanya nini ili kwamba niishi maisha ya kutukuza Mungu, maisha ya kupendeza wanadamu, maisha ambao watachisikia kwamba wao pia ni wanadamu wanaoishi vizuri. Ndio wanahitaji nyumba nzuri, wanahitaji pesa, wanahitaji mashauri, wanahitaji vitu nyingi. Lakini utakuta ya kwamba nyumba nyingi kama hizo inaongozwa na wakina mama sana. Ya wanaume ni wachache lakini sana huwa wanafaulu. Kwa sababu kwa kawaida huwa walikuwa wanashikilia vitu vilivyo. Lakini kwa wale ambao ni wakina mama wanaumia kwa sababu kitu ya kwanza kama ni, ni kifo imekuja huenda wasirithi mali kwa sababu ya shida na utamaduni iliyoko ama ha, hakukuwa eh, bread winner ilikuwa ni mzee akaaga so utakuta ya kwamba anachipima katika hali ngumu na kweli ni katika shida na kwa hivyo wanahitaji maisha watakavyoishi kwa njia mzuri na hivyo ndio tunasema ya kwamba single parents eh, can eh, can do successfully lakini utakuta ya kwamba lazima wapitie kamba ngumu sana ili kwamba waweze kufaulu na wanahitaji maombi na, na mpango mzuri sio kwamba hawezi kufaulu kuna nyumba nyingi kuna waume wengi wamekuwa viongozi ya inji, wamekuwa watu successful katika maisha kwa sababu hata ngawa walitoka katika nyumba ya mzazi mmoja kwa hivyo usife moyo ukifikiri ya kwamba hakuna mfano ya watu waliofaulu katika njia hiyo. Kwa hivyo ukiwa mmoja hivyo usione ya kwamba wewe haujafanikiwa. Umefanikiwa na utafanikiwa. Bora tu uketi uangalie the main objective na ni nini unalenga na wewe utafaulu. Kitu ya kwanza kila mara unasikia wakiojiwa wazazi ambao wanaishi peke yao utakuta wanalia wanasema sijui sijeelewa niliangalia katika runinga moja nikasikia mama moja anasema sijeelewa kama hii watoto nimebaraka ama nilaana ninaishi na wao tu lakini bado ninauliza Mungu hii ni laana ama hii ni baraka lakini kitu ya kwanza lazima tuelewe ni kwamba Mungu amesema ya kwamba watoto nimebaraka kutoka kwa Mungu kitabu cha e, 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 mwanzo kitabu cha mwanzo e, 30 kitabu cha mwanzo 30 fungu la 20 Biblia inasema jambo na lazima tuelewe ya kwamba Biblia inaongea mambo ambaye ni hakika inaweza kuonekana ni ngumu kwako lakini kilichosemwa na Biblia ni hakika na hamna njia nyingine 30 fungu la 20 nasema Lea akasema Mungu amenimpa mahari njema. Sasa mume wangu atakaa nami kwa kuwa nimemsalia wana sita. Akamuita jina lake Sabuloni. Kwa hivyo unaona wale walikuwa wanasawa watoto waliona kwamba hiyo ni mibaraka kutoka kwa Mungu. Na wakaona ya kwamba ni mibaraka hakika kutoka kwa Mungu na ni ni dawapo kutoka kwa Mungu. Na hivyo ndiye Lea alifurahi aliposaa mtoto na akasema hii ni dawapo imetoka kwa Mungu. Mungu amenipa mahari njema. Amenipa mahari njema. Amenipa baraka kubwa. Kwa hivyo kumbuka kwamba watoto ni mibaraka kwa Mungu. Kwa hivyo wewe unapoishi hapo wewe ukiwa mzazi mmoja vile ulivyo kitu ya kwanza akili yako ikubali ya kwamba watoto hawa ni mibaraka kutoka kwa Mungu. Na kwa hivyo ikiwa ni mibaraka ya Mungu ni lazima ina faida ambayo itakusaidia. Na narudia kusoma kitabu cha Yakobo katika Biblia Yakobo ni kitabu kile iko katika agano chipya karibu na mwisho ya ufunuo kule kule inapakana na ufunuo 
Na hii mwandishi huyu ana, anasema hivi katika Yakobo moja fungu la kumna saba. Anasema hivi. Kila kutoa eh, kila eh, kila kutoa kuliko kwema na kila kilitolewacho kilicho kamili utoka juu ushuka kutoka kwa baba wa mianga kwake hakuna kubadilika wala kifuli cha kugeuka geuka kinachotoka kwa Mungu ni mibaraka chochote ambacho kinatoka juu ni ya Mungu na ibadiliki na makusudi ya Mungu itafanyika katika hilo kwa hivyo inatoka juu na inakusaidia kwa hivyo unapotazama watoto ukumbuke ya kwamba ni mibaraka kutoka kwa Mungu kwa hivyo kwa wewe ambayo ni mzazi mmoja unapokuwa exhausted physically emotionally financially children may not always seem like a gift lakini nataka kukupa e, e, ili jambo na tumaini ya kwamba ni mibaraka kutoka kwa Mungu Lija ya kwamba shida inaweza toka kila sehemu lakini watoto hao ulio nao wako pamoja nawe ni mibaraka kutoka kwa Mungu na kwa hivyo fundisho hili linakupatia nguvu ya kwamba usiangalie kwanza kama laana angalia kama ni mibaraka alafu uanze hapo sasa kutafuta njia ya kwamba nitawaongozaje hao watoto wangu nitawalishaje wataishi kwa namna gani kitu ya kwanza ni lazima tuelewe uwe mzazi mmoja uwe wazazi wengine we need what we call spiritual parenting hiyo ulezi ya watoto katika njia ya kiroho kwa sababu kitu ya kwanza Mungu tunamuona Mungu kama mzazi yeye anayejua ana, tunachohitaji yeye Mungu mwenyewe ah, is parenting us hiyo ndio sababu hata ukisoma wakati wana wa Israeli walikuwa katika nje ya Misri walikuwa wanaomba lakini Musa alipoongea na Mungu akamwambia ya kwamba nimesikia kilio chao hiyo ni kusema ya kwamba Mungu ana masikio na akasema hata nimeona kwa hivyo ni mzazi kwa hivyo katika parenting you can know you can see you can hear you can feel for the children kwa hivyo Mungu ako pale hata kila wakati kuturekebisha ukiangalia kitabu cha ufunuo sura ya 3:19 Mungu anasema ya kwamba ninakemea ninayempenda ninakemea ninayempenda na kwa hivyo Mungu kila mara anatusaidia kuturekebisha. Na kwa hivyo kila mara unapoangalia ndio tukisoma katika me, e, yule Suleiman mtu mwerevu sana katika katika Biblia alishauri akasema ya kwamba katika Proverbs 22:6 anasema ya kwamba mlee mtoto kwa jinsi ina, inavyompasa. Naye akishalelewa hivyo hata sawa hata akikuwa mzee. So With, uh, you cannot with all anything na kwa hivyo usisuie chochote kilicho mzuri with all anything good from them if it is your part to it usisuie kama kuna kitu ambayo unataka kuwapatia hawa watoto uwapatie na watafurahi ufanye njia zote kuhakikisha kwamba umeongoza katika njia ya kiroho kitabu cha Mathayo tatu fungu la 17 nataka nisome na we mtazamaji wangu furahia kwamba Biblia ina muongozo ambaye itakufikisha mahali utafurahia. Njia zake ni njia za kupendeza sana. Na mapito yake yote ni amani. Wewe ukiwa mzazi mzuri inasema ya kwamba wewe njia za Mungu njia zake ni njia za kupendeza sana. Njia za Mungu ni za kupendeza ni mapito yake yote ni amani. Kwa hivyo spiritual parenting ni kwamba unaelekeza watoto katika mwongozo ya Mungu. Na katika hali hiyo ni hakikisho ya kwamba njia za Mungu sinapendeza sana. Ni mapito 
ambayo yote ni, ya, ima, ni amani. Kwa hivyo mwongozo wa mzazi iwe ni mwongozo unaotokana na Biblia. Na hiyo mwongozo si kwamba ukiongoza kibiblia unaongoza bila kuwa na shida. Lazima uwe na correction. Lazima uhakikishe kwamba una unabadilisha. Una unapindua. Unaangalia. Ukiangalia katika madhale 23. Napenda kitabu cha madhale. 23 fungu ni la 13 linasema Usimnyima mtoto wako mapiku, mapigo maana ukimpiga kwa vimbo atakufa maana yake usikose kuadabisha kupatia mwelekeo kuonya kuwapatia njia nzuri hiyo haimaanishi kwamba una madharau kwa watoto wako na sio hiyo peke yake hata hata Paulo akiandikia katika kanisa la Waefeso anawaambia kwamba hata nyinyi wazazi musikasirishe watoto eh ni nyinyi wakina baba tena imesema wakina baba unajua za zingine sijui kama ili, alikuwa na maanisha kwamba wa, wakina baba ndiyo wanaletanga asira kwa watoto ama nini lakini hata ukiangalia watoto wanaweza kukaa upande wa mama sana kwa sababu hapa Afrika mara nyingi watoto wanatishiwa kwamba wewe ukicheza baba atakucha kukuunda kabisa. Eh? Na hiyo mpaka imekuwa kwamba sura ya baba ni sura ya asira. Lakini hata hivyo Biblia imeonya ikisema ya kwamba ninyi wakina baba ninyi musikasirishe watoto. Musi, kwa hivyo ni onyo ya kwamba kila mara musikasirishe watoto. Ingawa inashauri ya kwamba wa, watoto tiini wazazi wenu parenting by bible can be a challenge but at the same time what an honor to be chosen by god to raise one or more of, of his kids figuria kwamba ni ni heshima gani ambayo mungu amekupatia kwamba unaweza kuwa mzazi ya mtu mmoja watu wawili watu watano na hapa afrika tuna baadhi nimewahi kuona mama mmoja alikuwa na watoto 20 na wawili na aliwatunza vizuri. Eh? Hata inakuwa challenge ya kwamba unakuta wengine iko na moja lakini wameshindwa kuongoza. Na huyo mama alikuwa na washirini na wawili kule kwetu lakini utakuta ya kwamba wote wamesoma vizuri, wameelekeza. Ni heshima bora utegemee Mungu. Sio ajali ya kwamba u- uko na hiyo watoto. Mungu alikupangia iwe hivyo na utafaulu. Kwa hivyo wewe penda watoto. Angalia mienendo yako. Matendo yako yaambatane na matendo ya Biblia. Ma, ma, maneno yako na matendo yako inaweza kufutia watoto ama inaweza kuwatorosha. Kwa hivyo wewe uangalie. Unajua watoto wanasoma kutoka kwa, kwa, kwa sisi. Wanasoma tunayofanya wanasoma yale tunayotenda na kwa hivyo wewe hakikisha kwamba watoto wanafuata mfano wako wewe kama unasema hii na unatenda ingine utakuwa mfano mbaya kwa watoto kwa hivyo angalia children are, uh, are God's way of helping us become better people unajua hata saa zingine inatusaidia ndio udhihirike kwamba wewe uko na Mungu kwa maisha yako wakiteleza waki utaonyesha sura gani unajua saa zingine unakuwa na asira unakuwa na asira unajua Musa siku moja wa Israeli walimsumbua na unajua wa Israeli Biblia imewaita watoto ya Israeli so ni kama kikundi yote ni kikundi ya watoto wakasumbua Musa baka Musa akakasirika akatwanga mawe na Mungu akamwambia kwa sababu ya hii asira umenirepresent umeonyesha sura ambayo siko hivyo mimi ni Mungu wa upole Mungu ambayo ninafumilia na we Musa umeonyesha kwamba ufumilii kwa hivyo wewe kama mzazi mmoja nyumbani uko na unique challenges inaweza kuwa challenge kweli lakini single parent must be careful to know to allow their children to become their equals 
usifanye watoto wa kweli yako unajua shida moja ni kwamba unaweza kaa na watoto mpaka au, au wafanye wakuwe watoto unawafanya wakuwe watu wakubwa watoto si watu wakubwa ni, watu, ni watoto wadogo usilete wakae eh, kama nilika yako kwa sababu una mtu mwingine yako kaa unajua wale wanaishi na bwana wanaishi na bwana na basi ni watu wazima wawili lakini if parents overlook themselves in the process of trying to be good parents they will end up empty wewe kaa mtu mzima watoto wakae watoto na wale kama watoto usiwaongeleze kama watu wazima elewa ya kwamba hata kama hakuna mtu mzima ndani hapo tena wewe ni mzima peke yako kana wao na hiyo itakusaidia na hiyo watoto watasaidika waweze kukua emotionally katika levo yao na kwa hivyo parents um, wasazi walio wazuri ni wala ambao wanachukua watoto hao na kuwalea kwa njia ambao wako na nafasi na kwa hivyo pia uwe na misingi ile tunaita farm foundation farm foundation ya kwamba misingi ambayo umeweka ikue ina nguvu kabisa inasemama ili kwamba usije ukakuwa mtu mgeukeu hapa leo hapa kesho mpaka watoto wanashindwa I, 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 this is not fair nasikia wanajua kiingereza hiyo chao kidogo hii si fair Leo unasema hii kesho unajaribu hii. Lazima uchifunze. Kama kama hapo una mahali pa kuchifunzia, tengeneza chama cha single parents katika kanisa lako, katika mahali mnaokaa ili kwamba muwe mkishare experiences, ideas and experiences na mtafaulu katika maisha. Uwe rafiki na wengine ambao wamefaulu katika maisha usifikiri kwamba hata wale walio wawili huwa wanakaa pamoja kwa hivyo kanisa iliyo na afya pia ni kanisa ambalo linajali hawa single hawa widows katika kanisa kwa ukweli utakuta kanisa mengi makanisa nyingi hapo kijijini kila mahali mjini utakuta ya kwamba hawajali hiyo watu na wafanye bidii hata hata kuwasaidia. Kwa hivyo ninyi ambao muko katika hali hiyo single parents hakikisha kwamba mumeunda chama chenu ili muwe mukishare ideas na experiences ya namna mtakavyoongoza. Na kwa hivyo ninakuomba tu kule kama wewe ni mtu ya kanisa, kama wewe ni mtu ya dini wewe nenda pale mukapange mukachipange musife moyo tu mukachitupa chini mukasema hatuna mahali pa kwenda kwa hivyo kazi ya msasi ni kazi ambayo ni ya kuendelea na mabadiliko ile tunaita life changing process mahali unaenda ukiangalia ukiendelea ukibadilika ukiendelea kwa hiyo kuwa na mtoto ni kama ni, 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 it is like having your your heart forever running around outside your body. Na kama u, moyo yako iko nje na inaendelea kupiga kwa sababu hiyo ni maisha yako. So it is a challenge but your attitude will determine your effectiveness. Your attitude will determine your effectiveness. Wewe eh, nia yako iko namna gani objectives yako iko namna gani na kimi kama wewe umejitupa tu chini na kusema mimi kwisha so ita, itaamua tu it will determine your how you, you parent maana wewe kama wewe kweli umekaa na kusema mimi ni bure sasa nitafanya nini utakuwa muombaji bure hapo tu lakini wewe amuka chitingize hata Biblia inasema katika kitabu cha Mika inasema hata nikianguka e adui yangu mimi nitaamuka kwa hivyo usiseme mimi ni bure wewe tembea na useme hata kama ni nini kuna sifa nyingi ambazo zimesemwa juu ya, ya, ya single parents ambao wamefaulu sana hata ukipata vitabu unaona wengine wamejaribu mpaka wamekuwa watu ya maana 
Kwa hivyo, ndiye ninasema, eh, your attitude will determine your effectiveness. Lakini kama niya yako, imekunjika, ime basi, yenye utafanya itakuwa hivi. Wewe, usipo, ukisimama imara, nyumba yako itasimama. So, wewe ukikuwa e, e, mtu ambao unaongeleza watoto wako waelewe wewe, utakuwa mtu mzuri. Ukikuwa ai sana, watoto watakutoroka. Lakini, ukifumilia na kuwaonyesha direction ya kwamba huko hivyo na watafaulu, watafaulu hivyo. Kwa hivyo usiwe moyo, usiwe moyo wewe mzazi mmoja. Maana kuna mamilioni ya watu waina hiyo. Na almost population ya dunia, if millions of people, kama hawa wameja ujue hii dunia, population imeundwa na wao. Kwa hivyo, wewe kaa kwa imani, kaa kwa mungu, na mungu akiwa muongozo wa maisha yako, wewe utafaulu. Bila shaka, utafikia kiwango mzuri. Ndiyo nataka ni kukumbusha kwamba nimesema, wewe uwe spiritual parent. Parenting spiritually, muongozo ya kiroho, ndiye itakofaulisha. Ya pili, tegemea mungu, maana mungu ni musasi muku. Alafu wewe, angalia watoto kama watoto wazuri. Ya tatu, usikose kuuliza wenzako, ambao wamepitia katika changamoto kama hizo. Na wewe utafaulu katika maisha. Na hiyo, ndiye itakopatia uwezo. Nimechukua na fase huu, wewe mutazamaji. Ili kwamba ufikirie, wewe na nyumba yako, usije ukasema ya kwamba haiko hivyo. Hata ukisoma stories ingini, haukuti maisha ya yeso, atujui baba yake alienda wapi haraka haraka, ngawa baba ya mbinguni alikuwa yuko. Lakini utakuta ya kwamba, hake malisa, hake paa mbinguni, alikuwa hamebaki meri peke yake. Na hivyo ndi sababu, e, aliando over e, e, mama yake kwa kina Yohana kamuambia tunza uyu mama. Kwa hivyo kuna nyumba nyingi simefaulu na msasi moja. Na hii yako pia itafaulu. Kwa hivyo mungu wa kupariki. It is my pleasure because you are a treasure. Na mungu atakusaidia. Fikiria maneno haya katika laini hiyo. Na mungu atakuwezesha, uweze kufaulu kwa njia zote, na utaona kwamba wewe, you are a unique parent, but you have a precious a parenting style. Amba itakusaidia. Mungu akubariki, akuongoze, usiogope sana, na usiwe na wasi wasi. Mungu akusaidie, utafaulu. Ebu na tuwambe. Baba mtakatifu mungu wetu wa mbinguni ni asande kwa sababu, ya wazazi ambao wameingia katika hali ya kuishi peke yao umewatunukia na watoto Mungu apatie njia ili waweze kufaulu tazama huyo mzazi ambaye amewasa sana atafanyia nini Mungu utamwezesha afaulu katika njia zote rehema zako na huruma zako siwe pamoja naye kwa jina la Yesu mkombozi wetu amen Mungu wabariki, Mungu waongoze Baka takapo kutana siku nyingine kwa mapenzi ya mungu. Endelea kuwa nasi katika Hope Channel na mungu atakubariki sana. Asante. Watoto wadogo, yeee. Tunabahati leo kwa sababu wakovu umefika mlangoni muenu hamja sahaulika. Kwa hivyo huu ni wakati wenu ku tuataka kuimba jinsi ambavyo mungu anatupenda sisi kama watoto wake. Fungue ni nyimbo zenu za kristo nambari miambili na moja hunipenda pia. Tuimbe pa moja. Mungu huona videge wanao anguka. Akiwa penda videge vile hunipenda Hunipenda, hunipenda, hunipenda pia Najua ananipenda nilie mdogo Ragia namna mzuri hupamba 
maua akia penda maua vile hunipenda 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 pia najua ananipenda nilie mdogo mungu alie viumba videge maua hata sahau watoto kweli uwapenda hunipenda 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 pia najua ananipenda nilie mdogo Yesu hutupenda sisi sote ukaja usidhani wewe una nywele nyeupe kwenye kichwa ukajidhani mzee hakuna mzee mbele ya Yesu kila mmoja ni mtoto wake kwa saa. kwa hivyo anatupenda sisi sote machoni pa Mungu sote ni watoto, watoto. ehe amina mtazamaji mpendwa natumai unaendelea kubarikiwa na najua ya kwamba umebarikiwa katika kipindi ambacho kimepita kwa wakati huu ni wakati maalum wa kusikia mahubiri Sauti ya Mungu inaponena pamoja nasi. Najua ya kwamba mahubiri haya yatakubariki roho yako na yatakuinua na kusongesha karibu zaidi na Mungu. Na kwa hivyo kwa wakati huu nakukaribisha uweze kukaa kanda ya nuruninga yako, endelee kukaa kanda ya nuruninga yako, usikilize mahubiri sauti ya Mungu inapokuja kwetu. Karibu sana. Hamjambo watumishi wa Bwana na wakaribisha wakati huu ambako Mungu ametupa nafasi ya pekee ya kupata kusikiza neno lake kwa wakati mzuri wakati wa pekee ambako Bwana ametupa uhai na kwa hivyo nawakaribisha ili kwamba tujifunze neno la Mungu siku ya leo neno la Mungu ambalo tajifunza linatoka katika kitabu cha Ayubu na kabla hatuja endelea ebu na tuombe Baba wetu na Mungu wetu Mkarimu ishie binguni tunajikabidhi mkononi mwako tunakualika wakati huu unene nasi tunaposoma neno lako unena na kila mmoja wetu nena na msikizaji wangu kwa sababu naomba kwa jina la Yesu Kristo aliye mkombozi wetu amen watumishi wa bwana jinsi tulivyonena katika eh, sehemu ya kwanza ya somo letu la kitabu cha Ayubu tuligundua mambo mengi yaliyokuepo hii ni sehemu ya pili ambako tungali katika Ayubu mlango wa kwanza na Biblia inasema vizuri juu ya Ayubu unaposoma mlango wa kwanza kuna msingi wa pekee wa kile kilichompata mtumishi wa Mungu Ayubu. Niliwaelezea niliwa kwamba Ayubu hakuwa Muisraeli na Ayubu aliishi siku hizo za kwanza ambako yawezekana siku Abraham alipokuwa anaitwa kutoka Ur. Abraha, a, 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 ayubu alikuwa anatoka katika mashariki mwa mto wa Yorodani. Kwa hivyo hakuwa Muisraeli alikuwa muedomu. Mu na maandiko yanamzungumzia katika Biblia na maandiko yanamzungumzia kwa njia ya pekee. Watumishi wa Bwana leo hii tunaanza katika e, mlango wa kwanza kuanzia fungu la nane na fungu la sita mpaka la nane. Na mada yetu inazungumza ikisema ya kwamba Mungu akiwa na furaha ya pekee kwa ajili ya mwanadamu. When God is proud of a man Mungu akiwa na furaha ya pekee kwa sababu ya mwanadamu. E, Ayubu mlango wa kwanza fungu la sita hadi la nane nasema hivi, nasema hivi, e, ilikuwa siku moja ambayo hao wana wa Mungu walikwenda kujidhihirisha mbele za Bwana. Shetani naye akaenda kati yao. Fungu la mlango wa fungu la saba nasema Bwana akamuuliza shetani, umetoka wapi wewe? Ndipo shetani akamjibu Bwana na akasema natoka katika kuzunguka zunguka duniani na katika kutembea huku na huko humo duniani. Fungu la nane ambalo ndilo linaleta msingi wa kuzungumzia siku ya leo nasema kisha Bwana akamuuliza shetani, "Je, umemwangalia huyu mtumishi wangu Ayubu?" kwa kuwa hapana mmoja aliye kama yeye duniani mtu mkamilifu na mwelekevu mwenye kumcha Mungu na kuepukana na uovu Watumishi wa Bwana ingaliweza kusema ya kwamba Bwana asifiwe kwa sababu ni neno la pekee ambalo linatutia matumaini 
ni neno la pekee ambalo linakuja kwetu kwa njia ya pekee. Maandiko yanasema ya kwamba wakati ambako mkutano ulikuwa unafanywa mbinguni, haukuwa unafanywa duniani. Na Mungu alikuwa na ndio mwenyekiti wa mkutano mkubwa uliokuwa unafanya unafanywa mbinguni. Na katika hali hiyo e, viumbe ama wakilishi wa, wa sayari kutoka hapa na pale walikuwa wameenda mbele za Bwana na shetani naye akaenda. Na katika hali hiyo Mungu alimtambua shetani. Na alipomtambua shetani akamuuliza wewe umetoka wapi? Shetani akamuelezea ametoka duniani. Watumishi wa Bwana kuna kitu ambacho kinanitia matumaini ya kwamba Mungu anapomuona eh, anaposikiza habari za duniani anauliza juu ya watu wanaoishi duniani kumaanisha ya kwamba Mungu anaelewa kila mtu aliyeko duniani na anamuuliza shetani neno moja anamuuliza umeona mtumishi wangu Ayubu Watumishi wa Bwana jambo la pekee ambalo tunaweza kulisema ni kwamba Mungu ana watumishi wake Mungu anataja jina la Ayubu kwa jia ya pekee. Analitaja sio mtu tu, anamtaja kama mtumishi wake. Na katika hali hiyo ana anamuelezea shetani juu ya Ayubu jinsi anaeleweka mbinguni. Watumishi wa Bwana unaponisikiza wakati huu nataka nikuambia kwamba mbinguni unaju, unajulikana kama umemcha Mungu, kama unamwabudu Mungu kama umemtegemea Mungu Mungu anakujua wewe personally anakujua wewe kama wewe ulivyo ananijua mimi kama jinsi nilivyo na ndivyo Mungu anataja jina la Ayubu anasema umeona mtumishi wangu Ayubu katika hali hiyo Mungu hawezi kukujua tu kwa njia ya kujua anakujua na zaidi ya hiyo ana CV yako ana jinsi ya ji, eh, rekodi unavyojulikana nayo mbinguni na anafurahia kumuuliza eh, shetani anakwambia huyu sio mtu tu huyu ni mtumishi wangu watumishi wa Bwana nataka niwaulize ya kwamba eh, unaponisikiza pale uliko na familia yako na nyumba yako we mwenyewe ukiwa mama ukiwa mtoto ukiwa baba ya kwamba unajulikana mbinguni kama nani Aujulikani tu kama kama uh, Ayubu akujulikana tu kama Ayubu. Mungu anasema huyo ni mtumishi wangu. Watumishi wa Bwana hakuwa muhubiri, Ayubu hakuwa hakuwa eh, hakuwa kuhani. Ayubu hakuwa pasta. Hai, alikuwa tu ni mzee wa boma lake. Na kumbe katika uhuduma ya boma lake, Ayubu alikuwa amejulikana kama mtumishi wa Mungu. Kila unachokifanya katika boma lako kama jinsi unavyotunza watoto wako, unavyotunza watumishi wako, unavyotunza maisha yako, unavyotunza watu mnaoshughulika nao. Katika hali ya kumudhihirisha na kumwelezea Mungu juu ya hawa watu, Mungu amekuweka hapo kama mtumishi wake. Na maandiko yanasema vizuri sana. Mungu anasema huyo ni mtu wa pekee, ni mtumishi wangu jambo la kwanza unavyoendelea kuli, kuli, kuliona ni kwamba Mungu alikuwa ana ana, ana, ana uhakika wa kutosha kwa juu ya Ayubu. Anamuuliza shetani akiwa na uhakika ya kwamba Ayubu ni mtumishi wake. Na Ayubu sio mtu ambaye anaweza kuogopa kumwelezea shetani. Mungu alikuwa anajua kwamba tabia ya Ayubu ambayo wamejenga urafiki wamejenga nao na Ayubu urafiki huo hauwezi badilika hakuna kinachoweza kutikisa hata jinsi mambo yafanyike hivi na vile haiwezi kubadilika na ndivyo unavyoendelea kusoma unaona ya kwamba jinsi Mungu alivyokuwa na uhakika confidence with, with job jinsi Mungu alivyokuwa na ushirika harmony iliyokuwa kati yake na Ayubu jinsi Mungu alivyokuwa na upendo na Ayubu jinsi Mungu alivyokuwa na, na trust alivyomwamini Ayubu jinsi Mungu alivyokuwa na urafiki na Ayubu jinsi Mungu alivyokuwa na, na uhakika wa maisha na Ayubu anamzungumzia mbele ya mkutano pasipo Ayubu kwa sababu alikuwa na uhakika na maisha yake watumishi wa Bwana hivi ndivyo Mungu anavyosema Hivi ndivyo Mungu anavyohitaji tuwe kati ya ushirika kati yetu na yeye. Na katika hali hiyo anamuuliza ya kwamba huyu jamaa ni zaidi ya kulaumiwa. Ameenda zaidi ya kulaumiwa blameless. Na katika hali hiyo anasema his upright mtu aliyemkamilifu. Watumishi wa Bwana, ni wakati wa pekee ambako dunia inatafuta watu wakamilifu. 
eh, dunia inatafuta watu ambao wataweza kusimama wakati ambako eh, corruption imeshika dunia mzima wakati ambako eh, maisha ya dunia yamekoroga watu wamemsahau Mungu wakati ambako shida zimekoroga watu kabisa wakati huu ambako corona eh, imekuja na ikasababisha hata watu wamepoteza matumaini ndani ya Mungu how is god addressing you in his relationship with you Mungu ana anaeleziaje juu ya maisha yako anaweza kuelezea kama mtumishi wake dhidi ya corona dhidi ya changamoto za maisha jinsi dhidi ya kazi unayoifanya dhidi ya vyovyo vyote ulivyo unayoifanya Watumishi wa Bwana Mungu anamuelezea Ayubu akisema ya kwamba katika hali hiyo Ayubu ni mtu ambaye ametupilia mbali maovu Shansi sin na katika hali hiyo watumishi wa Bwana hii inampa Mungu matumaini anamuelezea shetani na mnajua kwamba shetani mbinu zake ni za kuangusha wanu wa, wanu wa Mungu yeye ndiyo si shina la dhambi lakini Mungu anasema dhidi ya wewe kuwa shetani nina mtumishi wangu duniani dhidi ya wewe kuwa kiongozi wa dunia unavyosoma katika kitabu eh, cha, cha, cha Yohana 8 fungu la 45 anasema baba wenu shetani katika hali hiyo Mungu anamuelezea dhidi ya wewe kuwa duniani nina watu ambao wananitegemea na wame kwa ajili ya imani walio nayo wewe hauwawezi wamepita kiwango cha kuanguka wamepita kiwango cha kujaribiwa na kurudishwa chini watumishi wa Bwana ninakupa matumaini ya kwamba ukimtegemea Mungu jinsi ayubu alivyomtegemea Mungu anafurahi Mungu anahusika Mungu anakutunza Mungu atakuwa pamoja nawe kumbuka fungu la tano la mlango wa kwanza pale ambapo shetani alimjaribu alimjaribu ali akamuelezea Mungu ya kwamba wewe unasema tu kwa sababu umemtunza Ayubu ume umeongeza mali yake umemubariki umemfanyia kinga ume umeendelea kumpa afya nzuri umempa watoto wazuri umempa vitu vizuri hii ndio sababu anakuabudu sasa hapa Mungu anajaribu kumuelezea Ayubu anamuelezea shetani ya kwamba no hiyo sio Ayubu umeona mtumishi wangu Ayubu umeona mtumishi wangu wa pekee naye mtegemea watumishi wa Bwana hii ndiyo hali ambayo inanitia matumaini unaposoma fungu la tisa hadi fungu la kumi na moja, e, maandiko yanazungumzia shetani e, Mungu akamwambia kama ni hivyo unadhani ya kwamba hiyo inaweza kumwangusha Ayubu basi enda shetani akaenda Nataka nikwambie watumishi wa Bwana hapa nazungumza kwa upole. Ushirika wako na Mungu unaleta baraka za pekee. Ushirika wako na Mungu unaleta matumaini ya pekee. Ushirika wako na Mungu unaleta ulinzi wa pekee. Shetani anajua. Kumbe ukimtegemea Mungu, Mungu anafanya kinga na boma lako. Mungu anafanya kinga na biashara zako. Anafanya kinga na, na mali yako. Anafanya kinga kwa watoto wako. Na hiyo sio ya kwamba huo itaendelea kuwa hivyo hivi vitu vinaweza toka Mungu akamwambia shetani ya kwamba unataka hivyo vitu eh basi enda na upate kuviharibu Mungu akijua vizuri sana ya kwamba dhidi ya mali hiyo dhidi ya kinga ya vitu hivi vyote hata ukivitoa kwa Ayubu Ayubu hawezi kutikisika. Ayubu hawezi kukana imani. Kwa maisha ambayo Ayubu alichukua na ushirika na Mungu, jinsi alivyomwabudu Mungu, jinsi alivyo tu anatoa sadaka zake, jinsi alivyokuwa amemjua ame na kutembea na, ku, na, na kumwamini Mungu, hivi vitu havikuwa vinaweza kumtisha Ayubu. Shetani alienda, watumishi wa Bwana akaribu kila kitu. Akaribu kila kitu unavyoendelea kusoma utaendelea kuangalia fungu la tisa hadi la kumi na moja. inadhibitisha ayubu alikuwa tajiri ayubu alikuwa mtu mkubwa ayubu alikuwa na familia ayubu alikuwa na, na vitu material things ayubu alikuwa navyo na dhidi ya hivi vitu vyote havikuchukua mawazo yake kuya, kuyatoa kwa Mungu hapa ndipo nataka nikueleze mtumishi wa Mungu ya kwamba maisha yetu katika dunia hii Tusije tukayaweka kwa vitu tulivyo navyo. Ayubu alikuwa na hivi vitu, lakini Mungu hakuzungumzia hivyo vitu, alizungumzia Ayubu. Mungu hakuzungumzia mali aliyokuwa amembariki, alizungumzia mawazo na ushirika aliyokuwa nao, na uhusiano aliyokuwa nao, na uwezo na imani aliyokuwa nayo kati yake na Ayubu. Watumishi wa Bwana, hili neno la pekee. Hili ni neno la pekee zaidi. Na hivyo 
e, unavyo unavyo unavyosoma ukiendelea ukisoma kuanzia fungu la tisa hadi la kumi na moja, uta, utakuja kuyaona hayo yote fungu la kumi na tatu, uki, ukisoma hadi fungu la kumi na tisa, hapa ndipo nataka nisome ilikuwa siku moja hayo wanawe na binti zake walipokuwa e, wakila na kunywa divai katika nyumba yao ndugu katika nyumba ya ndugu wao mkubwa mjumbe akawafikiria aka ayubu akamwambia hao ngombe waliokuwa wakila na na punda waliokuwa wakilishwa karibu nao mara waseba wali walikuja wakawachukua wote wakaenda nao nam watumishi wao wote wakawapiga mimi peke yangu ndiye niliyesalia mimi tu ili nije nikuletee habari hivyo ndivyo habari zikaendelea fungu la 16 fungu la 17 fungu la 19 watumishi wa bwana hapa ndiyo kuna jambo la pekee ambalo nahitaji nikuelezee ripoti ikaja ya kwamba vitu alivyokuwa navyo ayubu mali yake yote imechukuliwa na ripoti hii ilipokuja shetani ndiye aliyeenda akaharibu kila kitu na hivyo ripoti ikaja na ilipomuja ikampata ayubu akiwa peke yake kila mfanyikazi wake anakuja na mripotia kila mfanyikazi wake anakuja anamuelezea na katika hali hiyo maneno yakawa yamemchanganya ayubu na katika hali hiyo ayubu akaona mali yake yote imeenda sasa ikawa adhibitishe ya kwamba je ni mtumishi wa Bwana. Watumishi wa Bwana, dunia hii tunayoishi usidhani dunia hii itakuwa hivi siku zote. Tunahitaji watu kama Ayubu, watu ambao hawakuweka mawazo yao kwa vitu ambavyo wamebarikiwa navyo. Na katika hali hiyo maandiko yanasema ya kwamba unaposoma eh, unaposoma fungu la 20 hadi 22, maandiko yanasema baada ya kupata ripoti hiyo yote Ayubu alisimama na aliposimama akasema ni mali ambayo shetani anatoa kwangu maandiko yanasema akararua nguo zake kumaanisha alibaki akiwa hana nguo ya kujifunika na maandiko yanasema katika hali ya kusimama hiyo baada ya kurarua nguo zake akanyoa nywele yake na katika hali hiyo akaanguka chini na katika hali ya kuanguka chini hakulia mali yake maandiko yanasema akamwabudu Mungu wa mbinguni watumishi wa Bwana Bwana asifiwe kuna kitu cha pekee ambacho nataka uangalie ayubu amefika pahali ambapo mali yake inaenda na imeenda yote mali imeenda watoto wangali wapo hiyo ni lesson nyingine mali imeondoka badala ya ayubu kuwa na tikisiko kubwa kwa sababu mali imeenda Maandiko yanasema alirarua nguo yake akasema kama ni hii hiyo imeenda imeenda. Na katika hali ya kuanguka kanyoa nywele yake akasema sasa hii ni uchungu wa pekee ndio katika uchungu wa pekee. Na katika uchungu huu maandiko yanasema akaanguka kifudi fudi hiyo ndiyo ilivyokuwa ibada. Na akamwabudu Mungu. Oh ndugu zangu bwana asifiwe. Katika imani ya saa hizi msikizaji wangu Wakati huu ambako magonjwa yametokea kama korona imesababisha watu wengi wamepoteza kazi zao. Watu wengi wamepoteza biashara zao. Watu wengi wamepoteza mapato yao. Mapato yao yameenda. Jinsi Ayubu alivyopoteza mapato yake, mali yake yote imeenda. Mtumishi wa Bwana anazungumza nawe, yawezekana imetendeka maishani mwako. Je imekuweka katika hali gani hapo tunapoangalia ayubu ayubu badala ya kufanya lolote lile alianguka chini na kumwabudu Mungu nini ayubu anafanya ayubu anajua kwamba kumbe hivi vitu vilitoka kwa Mungu aliyombariki jinsi shetani alivyosema watumishi wa Bwana hivi vitu vilitoka kwa Mungu kwa sababu Mungu ndiye aliyempa kwa ajili ya uhai aliyokuwa nao na katika hali hiyo hawezi enda kokote pale Ndugu zangu na dada zangu waweza kuwa umepoteza vitu. Hivi vitu umetoa kwa Mungu. Ungali hai jinsi ayubu alivyokuwa hai. Kinachohitajika ni kutoa mawazo yako ijapokuwa ni chungu, ijapokuwa inachanga moto si haba. Lakini kuna kitu ambacho unahitaji ufanye. Jinsi ayubu alifanya, 
alimwabudu Mungu. Hii inadhibitisha lile neno ambalo Mungu alimwelezea shetani. Alimwelezea shetani akimwambia, "Umeona mtumishi wangu Ayubu?" Kumaanisha Mungu alijua hata mali ikitoka imani ya Ayubu itamsimamisha dhidi ya changamoto za umaskini, dhidi ya changamoto ya kupoteza mali yake. Mtumishi wa Bwana ni kuambie ugonjwa huu unaweza kuja umesababisha e, 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 mali yako imeenda imesababisha watoto wako wamepoteza kazi zao umesababisha wakati jinsi ya kupata chakula imekuwa ni shida lakini je inakuweka na urafiki na Mungu ama inakutoa kwa Mungu Ayubu hakuamua kwenda mbali na Mungu hakumlaumu mtu hakumlaumu yoyote yule alienda akamwabudu Mungu na akasujudia Mungu akijua ya kwamba Mungu tu ndiye anaweza kutoa suluhisho beloved it is only god who can give you an answer hakuna yoyote anayeweza kupa jibu lolote na katika hali hiyo maandiko yanasema ya kwamba Ayubu katika kuabudu aka, akatoa sauti akasema nilitoka kwa nyumba ya mama yangu bure na nitarudi tena nikiwa bure watumishi wa Bwana hivi ndivyo maneno yanavyoweza yanavyoweza kufanyika maishani mwa kila mmoja wetu katika hali hiyo vitu vinaweza enda we can lose everything we can lose everything we can lose even life lakini how are we connected with our god je tumeshirikianaje na Mungu wetu giza naweza kuja gari lako laweza vunjika ninaweza poteza nyumba yangu je uhusiano tulio nao na Mungu wetu unadhibitisha una, una, una nini katika hali hiyo eh, biblia inasema ya kwamba biblia inaonyesha ya kwamba ayubu alijua ya kwamba vitu hivi naweza enda na akaonyesha akaona kama vimeenda ninataka nibaki na kitu kimoja i just want to re- retain one thing and that thing is god and nothing else watumishi wa bwana vitu vinapoenda unabaki na nani kama rafiki wako job ayub alibaki na mungu and that's why he could still worship god Beside all the challenges God was still God in his life. Anasema ya kwamba it is only God that he remained with. Alibaki na Mungu. Mungu huyu alikuwa amemtumikia for a very long time. Unakumbuka verses 5 ambako inasema ya kwamba a, a, watoto walipokuwa wanasherekea Ayubu angalitoka asubuhi aenda toe sadaka zake kwa sababu akijua yawezekana watoto wamefanya dhambi. Watumishi wa Bwana alijua ya kwamba Mungu ni baba. God is the only father, a true father who does not change. Baba ambaye habadiliki and that is why he retained relationship with him. Alijua kwamba Mungu ndiye anayetoa, he is the provider. Na hivyo hata ikienda God is able to provide back. Na katika hali hiyo God is a restorer. Yeye ndiye anayeweza kuamusha na na, na kudhibitisha na kuokoa na kurudisha kile chochote ambacho kimeenda. He is the creator, anaweza kuumba chochote kile. Katika hali hiyo when things fly away, Ayuba akasema no, I will not to fly away with them when things go wrong don't go with them vitu vikienda mbaya usiende navyo retain your stand Re- remain on your on your platform and call upon the name of the lord ita jina la mungu na katika hali hiyo mungu ata kubule, mungu ata, ata kusimamisha imara mungu atakuimarisha jinsi paulo anavyosema katika kitabu cha cha wafilipi 3 fungu la 7 mpaka 8 anasema yote niliyohesabu kuwa vya maana nilikuja kuvihesabu kuwa bure hivyo ndivyo ayubu alivyohesabu mali yake mali ilipoenda ayubu akasema hiyo vimekuja na vimeenda nimevihesabu kama choo katika hali hiyo watumishi wa bwana katika kitabu cha wagalatia 6:14 anasema sio sio mimi bali ni, ni si, sina furaha katika jambo lolote lile bali katika Kristo Yesu watumishi wa bwana nataka niwalike mchana huu ya kwamba ebu mufanye Yesu kuwa ndiye shina la maisha yako maisha ya familia yako maisha ya mali yako usiweke mali kwa, kwa shetani weka mali kwa Yesu na katika hali hiyo ikienda utabaki na Yesu Usije ukaenda na jinsi watu wanavyoenda. Juzi nimesikia hadithi ya kwamba nyumba moja e, biashara ya mtu mmoja ilikuja kuharibika na katika hali hii alipoenda nyumbani akaambia mke wake hatuna neno lolote naloweza kufanya mali imeenda yote na kwa sababu mali imeenda ndugu huyo akaondoka kwa nyumba yake pole walipoenda kesho yake wanamkuta amejitumukiza kwa mtu na that is how he ended his life because he thought alidhani ya kwamba mali ikienda he has no future No I'm telling you there is future for you. Is God Mungu yungali yupo na Mungu ndiye anayuhai wako and there is still future for you. Don't 
eh, destroy your life. Usije ukaribu maisha yako. Angalia, Ayubu hakuharibu maisha yake. Alisimama na akamwabudu Mungu na akaita jina la Mungu wa mbinguni. Dhidi ya kila kitu kilipokuwa kimeenda. Watumishi wa Bwana, katika hali hiyo unaweza kuwa umepoteza vitu vingi. Waweza kuwa vitu vinaweza fanyika maishani mwako. And the, the book of Job uh, chapter 1 verses 8 kiteremuka inatupa matumaini ya kwamba God had a trust with the people ambao anajua ya kwamba hata vitu vikiharibika they will still call upon the name of the Lord. Watumishi wa Bwana kama Mungu amekubariki ungali na vitu vyako intact ungali unafanya kazi yako kubwa ungali una, unapata mapato yako usiweke matumaini yako kwa mapato yako yawezekana muovu shetani anaweza kuja wakati wowote kuharibu now be, be, be flexible have a double mind Don't be with this, don't be with a single mind. Usije ukawa na mawazo mamoja ya kwamba vitu vikienda huo ndio mwisho wa maisha yako. No, there is still hope. There is still life. There is still God. Na katika hali hivyo hivyo ndivyo Ayubu alivyokuwa akasema hata ikienda I have my God na vilipoenda he remained with his God he went to his God he worshiped his God and he believed in his God. Beloved, this is what life means. Life can life can change any time. It can catch you from the blind side of it. Lakini utabaki na nani? Will you remain with God? Will you remain with God? I'm only calling upon you such a time like this. Kenya can fall away. The world can fall away. Education can go. Things can go. Food can go. But who are you going to remain with? The Bible calls upon Job. Job alisimama akasema, "No, I'm I'm going nowhere. I'm going to worship." Oh, watumishi wa Bwana, when things are hard, Job is going to worship. God Job is going to worship. Hii ndio sababu Yesu anasema katika kitabu eh, cha Yoha, cha Mathayo, anasema um, uh, in the book of Matthew, anasema come unto me all you who labor and are heavy laden, and then I will give you rest. Job had a rest in Christ, not in in wealth. Ha. Watumishi wa Bwana, hili neno la pekee Ayubu alikuwa na matumaini, alikuwa na pumziko ndani ya Kristo Yesu. Njooni kwangu ninyi msumbukao na mliolemewa na mizigo mizito, nami nitowapa pumziko. Hii ilitimika ndani ya maisha ya Ayubu. Ayubu aliamua akasema no, I am going to rest in Christ. All things have gone. They came and they have gone. These things we are acquiring on this world, they usually come and they will go. They fly away in, according to the book of Jeremiah. Lakini who are, how are you going to remain with? I just want to give you a, a strength such a time like this that you stand like Job. Simama kama Ayubu wakati kama huu. Simama na matumaini. Go to God, enda kwa Mungu, worship God. Hii ndiyo sababu unasikia uh, unasikia Biblia inasema ya kwamba look I stand at the door and knock. However he hears my voice. Na tazama na simamu langoni na bisha kitabu cha ufunuo tatu fungu la 20 yoyote afungue mlango wake nikiingia tutakula pamoja naye watumishi wa bwana mungu anataka kusaidia mawazo yako anataka kuweka katika misingi ya pekee anataka kuweka katika njia ambayo ni ya matumaini hivi ndivyo anavyosema katika kitabu cha Yohana sita fungu la 37 e, wote anipao baba watakuja kwangu wala yeyote ajaye kwangu Sita mtupa nje kamwe. Watumishi wa Bwana, Yesu anasema jambo la pekee sana. Anasema sisi zote tumepewa kwake kutoka kwa, kwa, kwa baba yetu ambaye ni baba wa mbinguni. Kupitia kwa kifo, kifo cha Yesu Kristo, watu wote wamepewa kwa Yesu. Na Yesu anasema tukisha enda kwake Tukienda kwake na mali zetu, tukienda kwake na kila kitu licho nacho, na elimu na uwezo na mamlaka na hali yetu maskini wetu, ukosefu wa mali wetu, tukisha enda kwa Yesu hawezi kututupa kamwe. Watumishi wa Bwana, Yesu asemi tunaenda kwake tukiwa na mali. No. Asemi tunaenda kwake tukiwa na, 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 na elimu. No. Asemi tunaenda kwake tukiwa na, 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 na mamlaka. No. Anasema yoyote kumaanisha kwamba wewe pamoja nami tuna uhakika wa kwenda kwa Yesu na tukishaenda kwa Yesu hata tutupa kamwe. Mtumishi wa Bwana, mchana huu nataka niku, nikukaribishe. Ya kwamba usimame kama Ayubu. Ili bingu likiangalia linasema 
Nina mtumishi wangu wenyango, umeona mtumishi wangu wenyango. Umeona mtumishi wangu Jared, umeona mtumishi wangu Margaret, umeona mtumishi wangu so and so, umeona mtumishi wangu Enoka, umeona mtumishi wangu Filgona, umeona umeona mtumishi wangu ili Mungu anafurahi kwa sababu ana mtu ambaye ana msingi mkubwa, imani kubwa, hata mali ikienda hawezi enda, hata vitu vikiharibika hataenda navyo, yeye atamwamini Mungu, yeye atamwabudu Mungu come what may, come cold, come hot come nothing come adversity and and wealth come everything any time come whatever come he will still stand and call upon the name of the lord watumishi bwana this is what i'm telling you hiki ndicho kitu ambacho nakupa mchana huu kwamba usimame na mungu wako mungu awe na furaha kijua ya kwamba anajua imani yako na anaweza taja imani yako na acha nikuulize ya kwamba Waweza dhani ya kwamba kulikuwa na Ayubu peke yake duniani waliokuwa na mabudu Mungu? No. We had many believers by that time. But God was proud of Job. Why? Kwa sababu imani ya Ayubu ilikuwa imekomaa. Imekomaa kwa njia gani? Kuwa rafiki wa Mungu, kuwa karibu na Mungu, kuwa mtumishi wa Mungu, kutembea pamoja na Mungu. Hivyo nakukaribisha ya kwamba tembea pamoja na Mungu na hivyo Mungu apate kubariki Mungu apate kushika mkono kokote uliko ili upate kusimama na Mungu utembee pamoja naye Bwana akubariki kwa jina la Yesu Kristo aliye mkombozi wetu Amen tuombe pamoja Baba wetu wa mbinguni jina lako litukuzwe bariki mtumishi wako kwa sababu tumeomba kwa jina la Yesu Kristo aliye mkombozi wetu Amen Mtazamaji mpendwa natumai kwa wakati ambao umekaa kando ya runinga yako umebarikiwa sana mimi hakika nimebarikiwa nimeinuliwa na natumai pia nawe umebarikiwa hivyo na nashukuru kwa kuchukua muda wako kukaa kando ya runinga yako ili uweze kubarikiwa pamoja nasi kwa wakati huu ninapoondoka hewani na kushukuru sana ya kwamba umekuwa nasi na nataka tu kukumbusha ya kwamba tuendelee kuzingatia maagizo ya wizara ya afya kuhusu ugonjwa wa COVID-19 ya kwamba tuoshe mikono yetu kwa kutumia sabuni na pia tutumie barakoa ambazo tumepata ama tumepewa kwa tunapokaa na wenzetu na pia tuzingatie umbali ambao tunakaa na wengine ili tuendelee kuangamiza ugonjwa huu wa COVID-19 e, kwa hayo na kushukuru tena kwa kuwa pamoja nasi na nakukaribisha kwamba majaliwa ya Mwenyezi Mungu tukutane tena katika kipindi kijacho Mungu awe pamoja nawe Asante sana Mungu ni mwema tumefika tamati katika kipindi hiki cha adhuhuri Tutafungua vitabu vyetu vya nyimbo ni nyimbo nambari na sitini watakatifu kesheni nguvu za, za mbingu za ngoja washeni ta tayari kwa kurudi kwake bwana yesu anarudi tuwe tayari watakatifu kesheni nguvu za mbingu za
dambi njoni sasa Kristo a wapata ni shambi ote na nine ema kitambo mdawa isha yu aja yesu mfame yu aja mwenye fahari yesu yu aja enzi ni karibu yesu u